it's crazy that we live in a world where we can make make believe products, make believe stocks, imaginary and tangible assets, and make a killing off of it. In fact, a lot of people have gotten their wealth through imaginary products. <laughs> what a time to be alive! So I want to talk about financialization and kind of water it down because when you say, when you hear it, that honestly sounds like it's gonna put you straight to sleep. This is not a nursery or a bedtime story, so make sure you are staying up. Let's talk about how these imaginary products have made people so rich and have taken away from a lot of people. You know the kind of the either real idea and the true value between having tangible assets and having real businesses. So I want to get into all of that and more. It's Chris with the Cash Compass. All right, welcome or welcome back. I am here to teach you all the things that you should have learned in school about money, but for whatever reason they forgot to mention it. Please be sure to subscribe, and if you're really about your money, hit that bell. We talk about everything from personal finance to investing to the economy. Let's get into it. All right, so financialization sucks, okay? It's turned a lot of companies that were actually innovative and had products into nothing but financial assets that they just kind of carved the whole business out of, paid it to a couple of people, and let the whole business kind of just fail, right? Um, so let's talk about what financialization actually is. It basically converts real assets into make-believe fairy dust packages it up and just sells it to multiple people. So you end up becoming so far removed from the actual physical asset, you might think you own it, but you actually don't. And people just make profit along the way. As many times as they can package that up into a new you know, product, they'll sell it to you, they'll get a fee, and they go about their way. Sounds fine, right? But it actually isn't. So what we've actually seen is a shift away from innovation and just a shift into imagination okay and you're probably like crystal what are you talking about okay let me give you an example from 2008 which is a prime example of how financialization can actually screw people over dramatically because there is upside right and i'm going to get into the benefits and the downfalls of this but there is some upside but the downside it is dramatic so let's talk about securitizations and i've talked about this before but this is what financialization is in a nutshell okay so the actual home is the physical asset right when a bank loans money to a homeowner, their ass, they basically own that house, right? Because if you don't pay, guess what? The house is theirs, right? But who wants to wait 30 years to get paid? I know I don't, okay? And I guess the banks had that same energy because they were like, let's just package this up and get rid of it now so we can get cash now. So they'll go ahead and take a whole bunch of these loans that they have originated, right? They gave you a loan, you a loan, you a loan. They put all those loans together and now they've created a security. Okay, so do you actually own the homes, the underlying home? No, it just gets bunched into a whole bunch of loans and then they're gonna give it to unsuspecting people, okay? So here, you get a little piece of this home, you get a little piece of this home, now all of you are basically you know, investors in all these mortgages, except the underlying asset, like the home itself, yes, you can make a profit off of it, but it doesn't actually make money, right? The people who are living in there aren't really churning out businesses, like a lot of them are just living in there, so it's not like a real money-producing asset, but at any rate, you know, you're still making money from the principal and the interest payments, excuse me. You're making money from the interest payments. So it might be sitting in your 401k account and you're thinking, yes, okay, I was able to invest. And you could, you're technically a real estate investor, right? Because you have real estate in your portfolio and you're collecting your little interest. But guess what? 2008 happens and boom, nobody is paying their mortgages. They're all like, you got that house back. So now what happens? Now the value of that home has just dropped through the ground and the value of your 401k has gone right down there with it. So you were collecting your little interest, feeling like a baller, but then when the, the music stops and you, you have no chair to sit on, right, you're screwed. And what ended up happening to the person who originally originated the loan, right? Back in 2008, this changed slightly, but back in 2008, well, they just made their profit because they took all those homes, they sold it to you, they got their fee and they bounced, right? You're the one kind of stuck holding the bag. Now, since 2008, they've kind of made these people, you know, keep a little bit of that, you know, that security. But honestly, it's still very, very, very small relative to the overall package. So it really removes a lot of liability on their end and kind of just scatters it around to other people. That's one example of a financialized product, right? Because the actual security in and of itself doesn't have much worth, right? It's only as worthy as all the people that are actually paying for it, but you can't do a lot with it, right? If you're, you're removed from the actual asset. You can't rent out the house, you can't sell the house, you're just collecting your little interest payments. 
Um, another example of this is derivatives and forward contracts. People who are like the forex people who harass you and tell you you're broke because you're not investing in forex, right? All those things are pretty much speculation. But um, you know, some people argue it could be insurance, right? Because like if you're you're betting on this dollar or you're betting on this price going up, so you're trying to protect your you know your money now. So they actually never agreed whether it was speculation or insurance. Which left a lot of room for these, you know, these products to just really grow and grow and grow without regulation. So they were able to get extremely creative with how they made money, but it's really a sophisticated way, to me anyway, of saying you're just gambling, okay? These things are big gambles. You don't have the actual asset. So what happens now? A lot of people associate their wealth with these products, but they're not really the owners of these products. And now you kind of move away from thinking, okay, let me get a business. Okay, let me be a real estate invest investor. And you move into, okay, let me put my money in the stock market. Or let me invest in a REIT because, you know, it's kind of like a laid back method of investing. And that might actually be a benefit. So I want to talk about some benefits first, right? It does give people more access to different ways to invest. Unfortunately, we are not properly educated on all these financial assets. A lot of people really don't have any clue what they're buying, what they're getting into. They couldn't name one thing that's in their stock portfolio or within their 401k at least, right? So they're just kind of going on with the wind, taking whatever they can get, um, completely ruining the whole essence of investing and i'm going to get a video coming up soon about investing and kind of like what it should have been versus what it is now but anyway you do have access to you know grow your income right because they can be a little bit speculative but there is upside potential so it does open the pool up for people to get invested into these things without necessarily having all that money it also offers alternative ways to finance things right because maybe before all these banks wouldn't want to just keep on taking all these loans and having these 30 year mortgages. But if they can kind of loan it out to other people and now we have like oh, the whole world literally financing these homes, well, then they have more space to give out more business loans. So it's not necessarily all bad, right? They can finance bigger projects and just kind of scatter it around to other people. But the downfall is, of course, the banks kind of drift away from, you know, making good, sound investments to just saying, all right, let's just originate these these loans, make a fee and sell it to somebody else. OK, a lot of their profits come from things like derivatives and things like just kind of securitizing all these loans, just getting them off their books. Like, How quickly can we get rid of all these assets and scatter it around? to everybody else. Businesses have also shifted away from true innovation and just kind of focusing on how big is my stock price, right? Like they rather buy back their stock and make it look like they're doing better versus putting that money into innovation, trying to get a larger market cap, trying to get more people to love their products or make better products. No, it's not about that anymore. Right now it's about, all right, let's buy back our stock. Let's make things look better. Let's just make it look good on paper, make everybody happy so they can kind of keep on pouring money into our company. So because of that, we have no interest in the long term of these businesses. I mean, people who are investing in Uber, for example, and Lyft and things like that, these companies who have never made a dollar in profit, you can't be saying you're investing. That's straight up speculation because this this company is not viable, right? Like they can't even make a profit to save themselves. So why would you think that was a sound investment? It's not, but if other people are doing it, you might want to get into it, you know? So we've kind of drifted away from true investments and just kind of shifted more into speculation. We don't really analyze their business model and their profit and loss and their balance sheet. That's the please. That's whack. That's for the accountants, okay? We don't want to focus on that anymore. And how can all of this lead to the widening of the wealth gap? Well, now people are less interested in keeping their employees happy and keeping their customers happy, right? It's just like, how much more can I give out to the investors so they can keep on pouring into my company to make me look better, okay? Wages have been flat. Why? Because people are getting more money based on the stock market, okay? CEOs are going to get bonuses or CFOs, whoever, they're going to get bonuses if they can actually make this company look better. Get that stock price up and we're going to give you a bonus. So it kind of shifts away from the people and providing a good product to the people and it goes into how can I look even better to these random people who are speculating on me? So that causes a widening of the wealth gap because we're not actually pouring back into the people who are actually making the business what it is, right? So then people are working for these companies, but they're not really seeing any benefits. And people who are coming in just speculating, they're getting all the benefit, really. So it doesn't really make any sense. 40% of all profits actually go to the financial sector, which is crazy because those products don't exist. Like, how is it that almost half of the profits in this whole country go towards assets that you cannot even touch, you cannot even see? It literally makes no sense, but most people don't care about that because it's kind of boring, right? But let me know what you guys think. Do you guys think we should be focusing more on 
having physical products. I personally think so. I personally like real estate. I like precious metals. I like the idea of having your own business because or those are things that you can actually control that you don't have to depend on anybody on, right? There's no counterparty risk necessarily. I mean, yes and no, you know, but it's you have more faith over your livelihood. You have more faith over what can happen. If you lose money, you at least know, okay, this is what I did wrong. If you lose money in your 401k, you probably don't know where to start, you know, because they're just kind of investing it for you. So I think we need to really shift away from depending on these people to make money for us and really have things that we can touch and that we have control of. But I want to hear from you. All right, that will do it. If you like this video, then please like this video and share it with your friends. And if you have anything else going on, you know what to do. Go ahead and binge watch me. And until next time, keep your money up.